When it comes to being manager of Manchester United, you can expect a serious level of scrutiny. And Eric Ten Hag is no different to Moyes or Van Howe or Mourinho, Solskjaer or Randnick or Fergie before him. That's exactly what's happening now. An intense level of scrutiny is going to question every single decision that Ten Hag is making, even if they are the right ones. And in this video, I want to call out a few people because I think it needs to be said. I can see a narrative happening. And not a, a, Trust me, I'm not putting Keane and, and Rio in the same bloody pool as Graham soon. It's far from it. But I want to do this video to defend Eric Ten Hag because I think what he is doing is all with the best intentions in mind of Manchester United to take this club forward. That's why this video needs to be said. That's why I want to do it and I want you to share it because I think that we have to keep driving this support for Eric Ten Hag. Now let's go back to Fergie. Let me run through this video. Honestly, I think it's a 10 minutes well worth your watch. Please watch it. You'll remember this is the only thing I can I think that Fergie has said about Eric Ten Hag. And he was asked this back when he just took over as manager. What about Eric? Is, is Eric going to work the Oracle and turn the tide? Eric. Uh, oh, the, sorry, uh, the new manager. Well, I hope he does well because the club needs someone to get in control, you know, and I hope he does well, yeah. The club needs someone to get in control is the only thing that Fergie said. And that's exactly what Eric Ten Hag has done. Remember from day one when he took his first press conference, you know what he did inside that, inside that press conference? He walked around, took everyone by surprise, gave every single journalist in that front row, maybe the whole thing, I think it was the front row, gave them all a handshake, introduced himself to the press and set a tone with that. He took control of that whole press room by doing that, walking in and shaking everybody's hand. And it set the tone straight away. And I tell you what, throughout the entire preseason tour, Eric Ten Hag was bombarded with constant questions about Cristiano Ronaldo. Where is he? Is he coming back? Question after question after question. But he handled all of it. And I think he handled all of it very, very well. And then you've, you've got this situation that's developed with Ten Hag and Gary Cotterill. Cotterill, of course, was the, the, the journalist who hounded Ten Hag at Crystal Palace. He remembered. He didn't forget that. And he just parred him off in one of his press conferences. Uh, it was quite funny, actually. And that's Ten Hag, again, having that element of control. And he's established that with the media. I saw it in the pre-match press conference ahead of this game against Sheriff. Everybody wanted to constantly ask questions about Ronaldo. But he said, I'm not answering any more of them. Done. And it almost felt like the journalists were a little bit nervous to speak to him. But it's this Ronaldo situation which has, I suppose, brought out something different this week. And that's where I want to speak about Sunis, about Rio and Keane in, in, in particular. All three of them. Because Ten Hag's made it clear his decision and his thought process behind doing that with Cristiano Ronaldo. Um, I'm, I'm here the manager. Uh, I'm responsible for the top spot culture here. And I have to set standards and values and I have to control them. And it's, it's simple. It's very, very simple. Eric Ten Hag is doing nothing but trying to set new standards at Manchester United, trying to drag the club away from this player power culture that's been a toxic dressing room influence for years and years and years and has brought a sense of entitlement to players that don't deserve that sense of entitlement. And that's come, of course, as a consequence of the wages and the Woodward structure and the failed Galactico era. And it's something that Ten Hag's trying to rid this dressing room of. And the Ronaldo situation, I'm not saying it's it. I'm not saying that Ronaldo is a toxic dressing room influence. That's not what I'm saying far from it. But Eric Ten Hag had to exert that level of control to keep those standards. And this is exactly why he did what he did with Ronaldo. But the reaction to it has been so strange in the press. I wouldn't say it's been strange from Gar Graham Sooners, a man who, let's remember, has been sacked from Sky Sports, or is going to be sacked. He's been kicked off. He's irrelevant. He's just completely irrelevant and he tried to say this after the Ten Hag situation in five years time Ten Hag will be away from the club and nobody will talk about him and his spell at Manchester United ever again but Ronaldo will always be remembered as arguably the greatest to have ever kicked a football Graham Soonis man you're the only one who's going to be irrelevant here and the only one who's going to be forgotten in five years time geez any any young player any young fan watching football now don't even know who you are you, you haven't got Pogba to shout at anymore. Now you're just going to point the finger towards Ten Hag. There's a reason you've been let go of Sky Sports. And at some point, you'll probably be kicked off Talk Sport too. Just trying to twist and just trying to turn the narrative and twist the knife away from the fact that it's Ten Hag trying to take control. And it's, nah, Ten Hag, 
is just going to be irrelevant. You can see what they're doing in the media. And, and this one, of all the, and I've, I've, I actually had to do a separate video on this. But Roy Keane's comments post Ronaldo almost blew me away. They took me by surprise so much because Eric, because it, he didn't just defend Ronaldo. Like, he staunchly defended him. He went in on him saying, oh, look, others have done worse. Oh, he's, he's just a human, X, Y, Z. Ten Hag handled it exactly perfectly well. And this is coming from Roy Keane, the man who, of course, said this infamously about Manchester United's players. These are the same players that threw Marino under the bus. And they will do exactly the same to Oli. Leopards don't change their spots. Leopards don't change it. Again, I'm not putting Ronaldo in this category, but it's the idea that, that somehow Keane's disagreeing with what Ten Hag is doing. Ten Hag has already made it clear, abundantly clear here. We are in a team, we, and in a team we have standards and we have values. He is the man who holds those values. And if Ten Hag didn't handle this Ronaldo situation in the way that he handled it, those same players that Roy Keane was talking about there, they would have emerged again because they would have been empowered to do what they wanted to do because Ten Hag would have lost control. And that's what's made it so weird and so strange and so odd with what Roy Keane has had to say. And I think the same thing, in my opinion, can be said about Rio Ferdinand and his reaction to it as well. He spoke on, uh, on the Vibe with Five and this is what he had to say. He said that Ten Hag, he could have prevented the Ronaldo tantrum. That's what he said. Let's read it through here. I'm not sitting here saying that Ronaldo was right to do that. His actions are wrong. But if you look at the bigger picture, this could be prevented. As a manager, that's your duty. You've got to look at the bigger picture. Before every game, Fergie came to the table to explain what was going on. He go, listen, you're not going to play in the next two games. There's a, th a game third, third game up the road. That's who you're going to play. So you don't get them emotional reactions next week. So effectively, what Rio Ferdinand is doing here is saying, look, this isn't Ronaldo's fault. This is actually... The manager's fault for not speaking to Ronaldo enough. Now, that's is that coming from Rio speaking to Ronaldo directly, and that's and that's what's being said behind the scenes. Again, we don't know that. You can't make that assumption. But this is the same Rio Ferdinand who said this back in January. Issues challenged to Man United's leaders in furious rant over bad eggs. Same manager, same same person who said this. I would be saying fuck off then. I don't know if he said that. He might have said that. But he absolutely slated these players after that game against Brighton. And these are just... It doesn't matter. With, with Rio Ferdinand here, I think it would be a very different situation if it was Anthony Langer who did it. If it was Scott McTominay who did it. If it was Luke Shaw, Harry Maguire. It wouldn't really matter. But it's Ronaldo. And that's why Rio's unfortunately skewed here. I think the same thing stands for Roy Keane. Graham Soonis is trying to make himself relevant, but he's so irrelevant, it doesn't really matter. But Roy Keane and Rio are both being blinded by the Ronaldo lights in this situation. And they can't, I don't think fairly, it's the same way that Gary Neville really couldn't bring himself to criticise Solskjaer last year because of his emotional relationship with Solskjaer. In the same way, I don't think Jamie Carragher ever really criticised Steven Gerrard, even though he was absolutely abysmal manager and got sacked. It's because they've got connections that are deeper than just what we have as fans. And it makes their opinion hard to listen to, if I'm being completely honest. And I think what Ten Hag has done so far, what Ten Hag is continuing to do so far, is, is change that dressing room culture at Manchester United. And it is, it's... It's almost like the, the opposite of the X Factor that you can't quite describe. It's just that that feeling. It's something in the air. It's something that's just lingered at Manchester United for so long. Now, the Ronaldo situation has brought it right back to the surface. Not because Ronaldo is, is that toxic dressing room, but it's the idea of holding that control, that control that Fergie said was so important. And that's why I found it so strange to hear Keenan Rio not just come out in full support of Ten Hag, because they know what he's done is right. They've questioned the players before. So they have to have that same thought process to Ronaldo. But they haven't. It's been different. It's been, I, honestly, I think it's been strange. It's been odd. And I wanted to do this video sort of in defense of Ten Hag. 
I think he's shown an element of control from the beginning with the media and carried it through. I think he controls press conferences now. He answers what he wants, how he wants, and the press can't really get anything from him. That's very Fergie-esque. But I think that's just Ten Hag-esque. He did the same thing at Ajax. And to see Rio effectively kind of pointing the finger in the other direction, saying, I don't think it was Ronaldo, maybe. It might have been Ten Hag. Not having... And this is, this is the Ten Hag, by the way, who has... Look at, look, he's talking about communication skills being a problem for Ten Hag. Look how well drilled we are. Look how well coached we are. It's obvious that he's good at communicating his thoughts and his ideologies and his processes on the training ground. Otherwise, we wouldn't be playing as well as we are. And there's so many players who have come out, Dillo and Shaw and other players who have said, yeah, it's very clear the direction that Ten Hag wants us to go in. So don't think communication is an issue with Ten Hag. It's just kind of like finding different different directions to point in instead of pointing at Ronaldo. And that's not what you need from your pundits. Certainly ex-United players, and certainly when I think the decisions are being made that are correct for our football club. That's why I did this video in support of Ten Hag. I will continue to do it. And if he does stuff wrong, I will criticise Ten Hag. I won't, I, I'm not blinded by it. It's just frustrating me seeing all this this week. That's why I wanted to do this video. You can let me know what you think in the comments, as you always do.